I want to take time in this pod format to tell a story. So I want, I'd love you to share a story that you think, uh, you know, lights you up around a Pac-12 athlete. It could be in the way in the past. It could be Bill Walton, the guy you sit next to. It could be somebody in the future. It could be present, whatever you want. And then I'm going to do the same. And I think that'll be a fun way for us to kind of close out these episodes as we continue to really crank up the episodes here at this time. Yeah. Um, you know, Yogi, just, I'm changing my mind. I had, I had one ready to go here, but I'm going to save it for our next one. And just because of that intro, uh, let me start with something that just happened in Las Vegas. Uh, the one day and night that there was uh, fo- uh, basketball play, uh, two football coaches were there. And I had a chance to see a guy that I, well, we both have had some priors. You much more than I have had prior with Nick Rolovich. And Rolovich was there. And, of course, uh, we went up and shared old arena football stories again. And he, uh, he is going to be a wonderful hire for Washington State. In fact, I'm glad I saw Pat Chun, the athletic director, and had a chance to tell him his face. Two for two in one year. Kyle Smith, basketball, Nick Rolovich, football. Well done. But the real story, um, I was surprised to see him there. He was there in person, sitting with a great basketball player in – the Pac-10 era from his school, Detlef Shrimp, Chris Peterson was there. And I'm so happy because uh, through your credibility, Yogi, and through your past connections with with Coach Pete, I've had a chance to get to know him a little bit more and reach out. But to see him face-to-face, and I walked up to him and I commended him for how he handled his change, how he announced it right at the end of the season, gave the school – time to make the decisions necessary before signing days. Jen Cohen, the athletic director, did the right thing by immediately promoting Jimmy Lake so that the the program stays from within. The incoming signees all understand exactly who they're going to play for, what the situation is. And for a program that Chris did a massively important job of rebuilding its national prominence, for him to make a decision that caught everybody by surprise in the manner in which he did with integrity means that program goes on with just the most minor. And he, he said, I won't be any change. I said a minor, minor little skip on the EKG sheet, but, but in this day and age, well done. So uh, I don't know what Chris Peterson's going to do. Yo, you may know more you know, down the line, at least have a guess guys, guys, quality guy. And as a winner, which Boise state first found out, Washington found it out. And I think in this time, we so needed someone to stand up and act with integrity whose word meant something. And Chris Peterson did that. Man, I love that you went there because the day COVID-19 at least was announced in Seattle, I landed there. I turned my phone on and the alert came up and I was going there to host a fundraiser for Washington state. I've done it for probably the last five or six years. And it's of course the first year with coach Rolovich and to stand on the stage next to him. And, you know, I, you know, it, it's not my show. So I just kind of tee him up and lean back and to hear him talk about the pride of what that community is like in Pullman. And he, he got it. He got it instantly. And then of course, you know, the players talking, it's a totally different style of leadership, him versus Mike Leach. It's, it's going to be great because anytime I think you have drastic change, it's a good thing. I think it's hard when, you know, if things are just going okay, you bring in somebody that's just, you know, kind of staying with the same rows, staying with the same, same message. He's not that. Um, and uh, selfishly, it's my favorite offense in the history of football. Because uh, <laughs> I played in that for, for a while. He's still a wide receiver. <laughs> that's right. You still are. Run and shoot. We'll, we'll, we'll get into that one. Um, and then the next morning, I went to breakfast with Chris Peterson. So, so I love that you said that because within about a 12 hour window, I was with them within a five hour window, you were with them. And those are two rock stars, you know, for totally different eras of their careers, but you're right. The great examples of young men developing and becoming real men. And uh, that will link in this. There's a great article in the athletic today. I think it was about like six things we learned from Chris Peterson. And one of the sixth one, I think the sixth one was um, his program, his built for life program works. And it was all former players talking about how he really built them to become fathers and men. And I think a quote that resonated with me, a player had a baby and he said, coach, how do I be a good father? And he goes, be a good husband. And you've told me that since I met Amy and thought I was going to marry her. So um, I love your story. 
Yeah. Uh, By I'll the be- way, Yogi's going to be a dad coming up. So there, keep that in mind. Yeah. The two of you, you and Amy, that's how you're good parents. The two of you. Yeah, totally, man. Um, so with that being said, I'll, I'll keep my story short. Uh, I was kind of going through current roster, previous rosters. And my story I want to tell today is about Jared Goff. And we love Jared for a lot of reasons. Uh, I remember being on campus the first day he was there. I remember meeting him at the Elite 11, a high school camp the previous summer. The Elite 11 that year was the who's who of quarterbacks. It was Max Brown, it was Christian Hackenberg, Asante Woolard, who ended up at UCLA, won the MVP that year. Um, it was uh, 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 Malik Zaire, Notre Dame, Luke Del Rio went to Alabama, Oregon State, Florida. I mean, it was, it was packed. Uh, Danny Etling, who was started at Purdue and then LSU and was at the Patriots for a while. And Jared just continued to be surgical. He was, he was quiet. He had, an, he had like a confidence that bordered arrogance about him, but didn't say much. He was about 165 pounds, you know, dripping wet. You knew he was going to Cal. You knew they had Zach Klein. You knew they had um, – oh, I'm blanking on his name. They, they had a couple really talented quarterbacks that were already there guys that have came through the elite 11 and I was like, this will be interesting. You know, he committed to uh, a coach, Jeff Tedford, who was subsequently let go, mm-hmm. stayed with his commitment, wanted to go to his Cal, his family had the bloodlines there and he showed up and we were filming the drive, uh, the documentary series on the Pac-12 networks. I'd recommend it. If you're looking for something to binge, go to pack-12.com, watch all the drives, but start with year one. We can, we can binge those. Yes, you can. Yeah. Great. Yeah. You can binge those. Good. And uh, I think they're even on YouTube as well. Um, that being said, Jared comes in and he just has this way about him. He's rocking number 16. And we know who wore 16 in the Bay Area for, for so long. <laughs> it was his idol, and Joe Montana. And, and he just starts dealing and dealing and dealing. And they go 1-11. And we cover the whole season. And I'm talking first time in college football um, in a documentary series, a player was mic'd up. We would mic up Jared multiple times. We mic'd up his coaching staff. We heard everything as a production company, every single thing, good, bad, and different, and made the decisions, of course, of what to air and what not to. That being said, fast forward to last year, I sat down with Jared Goff in a conversation with him, um, had it on my podcast. Go back to it if you haven't listened to it. And in front of a live audience, and Jared talked about how some players come from rough upbringings. Some people don't have two parents. Some people aren't socioeconomically as stout as he was growing up. And he didn't have that edge to him. And sometimes that can be characterized as like, you ain't gone through anything tough. And I asked Jared about that. I said, what do you go to when it's hard? You know, what do you go to in the NFL when like you're going to play in the Super Bowl? What do you go to when it's third and eight and you're backed up in your own end zone on the road? He goes, I go to one and 11. I know that I survived that. Because I remember when I separated my shoulder and you could hear this on that final episode of the drive for Cal, separates his shoulder he's mic'd up but he stays in the game throws a touchdown pass and then comes out and oh by the way i think that was the record for a freshman at the time in pac-12 football with touchdown Mm. passes but the grit that he has came from the game and i think that's really fun because we love and i love and you love we love telling these stories about where guys come from and they're amazing because it's their dna but sometimes you can create the, the the grit gene within the sport that you play and for a guy who we admire and love and Jared, now he's, he's becoming a man or he's older now in the league, he's got his big contract. I still think of that when I know it's hard for him in a game. In his mind, he clicks into 111. And, uh, and I think a lot of us have gone through a quote unquote 1 and 11 moment in our life. Maybe it's now, who knows? But it developed his resiliency. And, and that's why a lot of us and, and their head coach of the Rams still can, can continue to believe in it. Great job. Gosh, I can remember. His freshman year, night game at Eugene, raining, and they had to take him out. He was having trouble handling the ball. Yep. And he, he, I think he may have played the first quarter that night, and that's it. And now today, here's a guy that's coming off what was termed a disappointing season because he was 9-7. and seven. <laughs> <laughs> A long way from 1-11, isn't it? Amen. Oh, all right. I love you, Ted. We're going to be doing this a lot more often. Um, Give us your feedback. We're putting it on YouTube for the first time so you can see our faces and interact. I know, Ted, when I'm working, I got YouTube kind of rolling with a bunch of videos. Um, We'll also, whatever social platform, be on Ted's Facebook, mine. We'll upload it to Instagram, IGTV as well. Um, And what do you want to talk about? We'll talk about football. We can break down every team. We can talk (laughs) about hoops. We got to talk about the draft. 
uh, we're going to go there um, and hopefully bring you along this Pac-12 adventure. So, Ted, thanks for coming, man. That's great. And I echo that. Join in with us because, hey, look, we're all looking for something to talk about. And uh, this is a great way to do it. It's the National Sports Library, YouTube. Amen to that. And if you have any ideas for preschool, let me know, because basically <laughs> teaching other than this hour of every day, we've yeah. got preschool. All right. Love you, man. Talk to you soon.